Hello and welcome to Road Farm, Great Missenden. We know that there's been a farm here on the same site since at least 1750 because it was shown on the earliest maps, still with the same name. We did some restoration work on these barns within the last 10 years, which has led us to discover quite a tale of local resourcefulness and ingenuity, which we hope to share more with you now. Here we are in the threshing barn. You're looking at the lovely threshing floor here, which is one of only two, I believe, in the whole of Bucks, which is left intact. The boards for that floor were, made, were sawn from local oak trees, as were the uh, beams which hold the barn up. Barn up. Um, I particularly love the, the curves in this particular set of beams, which follow the central contours of one single curvy oak tree, one curvy hedgerow oak. There's one there, one to the right of the doorway, one to the left and one further over. Uh, they cut down the centre line of the tree to maintain the strength of the timber, which just wouldn't happen today. Um, that tree would have been destined for firewood. But the the exciting thing is that every single piece of this barn came from the local area. The timber, the tiles were made of local clay, the tiles are held on the roof by pegs made of oak, that would have been done locally as well. Um, the floors underneath me, underneath this, this hay, is a chalk floor from chalk dug locally, and probably on the farm. Uh, we have chalk quarries on the farm and everything down to the nails in the boards, the, the iron ore for making the steel wouldn't have been um, dug locally, but the nails would have been made by local blacksmiths, every single one of them made by hand, as were the nails in the threshing floor. They cost two pounds a piece when we had to do the, the restoration work, believe it or not. One of the problems with farming the Chiltern Hills is how to provide water for your livestock in the dry summer months. The Victorians had an ingenious way of solving this. They stored rainwater from the roofs in underground water storage systems like this one. We have three of them on the farm, each holding about 15,000 litres. I'm particularly fond of them and I would absolutely love to get them working again so that I can source rainwater for my livestock in this particularly quaint and historic way. Here's a lovely example of a wall that we didn't need to restore. Beautiful handmade bricks in all sorts of different colour patterns um, with lime mortar still firm and solid between the bricks. Again, all handmade. You can see the classic wood fire blackened ends of the bricks and the patterns where the, the, uh, the bricks were laid crossways in the brick kilns to be fired and where the, the smoke and the heat from the fire has melted the sand between the layers of bricks and caused it to fuse into this glass effect which later became quite sought after in bricks. Um, but it's a classic example of how the wall was made well and has lasted the test of time. Here on the other side of the same building we have a piece of flint work below the brick wall. I didn't even know that this was here before we did our restoration work because there was uh, a lean-to on the side of the building and a pile of stuff in the way so I didn't know it was here and I asked myself when we when we exposed it why should there be flint work underneath a brick wall it wasn't until a little while later that someone pointed out the solution to me which is that if you want to make a level foundation for a brick wall it's easy to lay flints, which come in all shapes and sizes, in the shape of a triangle. Perfect solution! So I hope you enjoyed 
that small snapshot of what there is to see at Rogue Farm. There is much more to discover. Um, so we hope that we might see you sometime soon to find out more.